Because of the great compassion of the Supreme Buddha, now we know that we have come across a very rare teaching. If Supreme Buddha hadn't taught this Dhamma, out of compassion for this world, we wouldn't have known anything about sansara, right? So, because of this rare teaching, now we know, all of us are travelling in a journey, in a long journey, called sansara, in a cycle of birth and death. Is this journey a happy one or is it full of suffering? Hmm? Happy journey? No, this journey is full of suffering. Do you remember how Supreme Buddha explained that suffering? Supreme Buddha asked, Monks, what do you think? Which is more? When you roam and wander in this long journey of sansara, going from one life to another, mostly through bad worlds, lower worlds, very rarely uh, you came to the human world also. But which is more? When you underwent suffering, you had to cry. Which is more? The stream of tears you have shed, or the water in the four great oceans. Then the monks replied, Bhante, as we understand the Dhamma taught by the Blessed One, we have remembered that the stream of tears we shed is greater than the water in the four great oceans. That's how we have cried. So this journey is not a happy one. Again, Supreme will explain. Don't forget, because you have been born as cows, goats, chickens, buffalo, and pigs. when you wander on in this journey. 
having been born as such beings, such animals, when you were beheaded, when they cut your head, the stream of blood that you shed is greater than the water in the four great oceans. That's how we suffered in this journey. Still we haven't escaped from that journey. Have we? Hmm? Have we escaped from that journey? No. no, still we are in that journey, we are traveling. Still we are crying. In the future, we will have to cry a lot. When our parents die, when our family members die, when we face uh, things in the life. So Prabhupada says, for a long time, monks, you have suffered You have filled the cemetery. Do you know the cemetery? When we die, we people throw away our dead body corpse into the charnel ground. Then it becomes a part of the ground. Right? So Supremati says, You have filled the cemetery. For a long time you have suffered in this journey. It is enough to be liberated from this journey. That means, at least now, you should make an effort to make an end to this suffering, to this journey. So, that is how Supreme Buddha explained the noble truth of suffering. Not only about suffering, but Supreme Buddha explained the cause of suffering and then the end of suffering. What is the end of suffering? Nibbana. What is the end of suffering? Nibbana. Achieving Nibbana. And then Supreme Buddha explained there is a path which should be developed in order to achieve the end of suffering. What is that path? The noble A4 path. The purpose of association of good friends, Kalamitas. The purpose of listening to the true Dhamma. The purpose of making merits. The purpose of following precepts. The purpose of practicing meditation is to make an end to this journey. That's the purpose. That's the one and only purpose. If we follow the instruction of the Buddha. Nothing else. So, now we have to follow the Noble Eightfold Path. Because that is the one and only way leading to Nibbana. Okay? So, but when we try to follow that path, we can understand how difficult it is to that follow to follow that path. Haven't you understood that? Is it an easy thing to follow the noble eightfold path? Mm. To control our defilements, to uh, 
we can defilements to follow the precepts. These things are not easy things. We can understand one reason for that. We have our habitual attitudes. What do we have? Habitual attitudes. Now, since we are uh, journeying in a long journey and basically uh, through bad worlds with impure mind states, we have that background still with us. Right? So our minds incline to follow that background which is full of defilements so what can we do to overcome these bad these habitual attitudes which lead to laziness or negligence Negligence means uh, we are very lazy to practice this term. Or we are very weak to remove bad things from our lives. We are not strong enough to cultivate awesome qualities. See, when Supreme Buddha teaches the Dhamma, the stream of blood that you have shed is greater than the water in the four great oceans. Isn't that a shocking thing? And even in this life, you have been born as a human being after a very long time, but still you have a very short period of time in this life. Before this comes to an end, you have to strive hard. But still, we are we can say we are very lazy uh, with the fact of removing defilements. Most of the times we are invaded by our defilements. Now in the Dhamma, uh, the laziness is explained as the uh, the inability to remove defilements of the mind. So, in the ordinary sense, if someone is lazy, it's related to the physical laziness, right? But in the Dhamma, laziness means one is lazy to remove defilements. Okay? So, tonight we are going to learn a very beautiful sutta uh, that explains about our habitual attitudes that block our way to true happiness. And uh, in the second part of the Sutta, Supreme Buddha explains the way out of those uh, habitual attitudes. Yeah. This sutta is from Anguttara Nikaya, Numerical Discourses of the Supreme Buddha, chapter, chapter of AIDS. Supreme Buddha, uh, our great teacher, starts off the sutta like this. Monks, there are these eight grounds for laziness. There are these eight grounds for Laziness. Which eight? Okay, how many, uh, how many reasons for laziness? Eight uh, reasons. First one, Supreme so explains, there is the case where a monk has some work to do. A monk has some work to do. 
the thought occurs to him. I will have to do this work, maybe tomorrow. But when I have done this work, my body will be tired. I will be very tired. Why don't I lie down? That much things. I am going to be very busy tomorrow. So, and I will be very tired. So I have to be, uh, I have to have a comfortable body beforehand. So, why don't I lie down? Why don't I go to bed? So he lies down. He does not make an effort for the attaining of the Dhamma that is not attained so far. He doesn't make an effort for the attaining uh, of the Dhamma that is not reached so far. He doesn't make an effort for the realization of that Dhamma that is not realized so far. This is the first ground for laziness. So, we are going to lose our or we are going to miss this rare opportunity if we don't work hard. But inside our lives, we have this uh, unbeneficial habit. So, Pramod explains about that. What is that unbeneficial bad habit? We tend to sleep all the time. If you have free time, what is the top priority? Sleep. 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 Relaxing. Relaxing the body. This is very important. Now, this case is explained related to a monk, but it is the same with the lay people also. Like in your case, it is uh, so strong. Like Since you are busy, uh, generally, when you have some free times, you normally tend to use that time not to practice meditation, not to practice eight precepts, or not to practice uh, studying the Dhamma, but to sleep. Now, if someone is very busy, the, the time, available time for the Dhamma practice uh, could be very limited. So that limited time period has to be used efficiently. But normally, if we are busy, if we have some uh, free time, what do we do? If he's a busy person, normally yes. to sleep. So Supreme, Supreme has discovered very clearly what our weak points are. And how we are going to miss this opportunity. Because now we know uh, a lot of Dhamma. We have learned a lot of suttas. We know the danger of this sansar. We learn it again and again. We know all the meditation techniques. We know how to do them. But do we practice them? That is the problem. Now, this sutta explains very clearly what has happened to us? 
knowing all the dhamma, knowing all the meditation techniques, knowing the problem clearly, still why we are far away from Nibbana. So when we have to do something, um, what do we do before that? We think, oh, I'm going to be very busy tomorrow, so I, go to, I should go to bed earlier today. Right? Okay. That's the first one, uh, the first ground for laziness. Let's learn one by one. Again, Supreme Mood explains. Then there is the case where a monk has done some work. Okay? Maybe uh, repairing something in the monastery, or cleaning something, or dyeing robes, or something like that. You can think of uh, the duties you perform in your house, right? Doing washer, uh, dishes and or cleaning the house, uh, gardening, and all those things, okay? So, you have done some work. The thought occurs to him, I have done some work. Now that I have done work, my body is tired. I feel very tired. Why don't I lie down? Why don't I go to bed? So he lies down. Will he practice meditation? Will he study the Dhamma? No. That's called laziness or negligence. He does not make an effort for the attaining of the Dhamma that is not attained so far. Because we haven't realized this Dhamma fully, right? So we have to work very hard, but we fail. We pause for What do we do? We pause for This is the second ground for laziness. Do you remember the first one? What is the first one? Well, before he goes to work. He before we go to work? He thinks that he's going to be, yes. perhaps I should lie. Yes, we should uh, lie down. And then the second one? After it does the work, he feels very tired. Yes, and go to bed. bed. See, uh, we think these things are very normal. Because that's how everybody thinks. But Supreme says, no, these are the grounds for laziness. Next one. Supreme Mudra explains, then there is the case where a monk has to go on a journey. To go on a journey. To go somewhere, to another village or something like that. The thought occurs to him, I will have to go on this journey. But when I have gone on the journey, my body will be tired. What does he think about? His mind or about his mind or body? Not about the purification of the mind, but this about this fragile body. He thinks I have been very tired. Why don't I lie down? So he lies down. He doesn't make an effort for the preaching of the Dhamma that is not yet reached. That means, uh, as long as we are far away from the goal, we will have to suffer. That's the result. Next one. There, uh, then there is the case where a monk has gone on a journey. Right? So he has come from school or from a class or somewhere else. The thought occurs to him, I have gone on a journey. 
Now that I have gone on a journey, my body is tired. So we are making up our mind on the way. I should go quickly and I should find my bed. This is how we have traveled in this sansana. If we don't change this habit, we will fall again into this suffering. But we, it is very difficult. First we should learn these things and how our habits uh, harm us. Then we can work on them. So, he thinks, why don't I lie down? So he lies down. He goes to bed. He does not make an effort to realize this Dhamma, which is not yet realized. That means he doesn't use Dhamma books to read, he doesn't practice meditation, he doesn't uh, study the Dhamma. Because those are the things that we should do in order to attain the goal. Reading Dhamma books, listening to Dhamma talks, uh, refreshing the precepts, Practicing meditation, these things. So these things are postponed. Where is the priority? Go to sleep. So we didn't, we didn't think that there would be such a sutta, right? <laughs> Talking about our sleepiness. It's a very simple thing, an insignificant thing. No, that is very significant. Then there is the case where a monk, having gone for arms in a village or town, doesn't get enough food. Okay? So he went to collect some food from house to house. So maybe that is a very poor village, so people didn't offer much food. So he didn't get enough of food. So he, he's still hungry. The thought occurs to him. I, having gone for arms in a village or town, haven't gotten enough food. This body of mine is tired and unsuitable for practice. Okay? But he's very weak. I'm like faint. Right? Why don't I lie down? Isn't this the way you know, we think? So he lies down. He doesn't make an effort for the realization of the dawn. Again, Supreme explains. Then there is the case where a monk, having gone for arms in a village or town, gets a, a plenty of food. Now he is full. Okay? The thought occurs to him I have gotten as much uh, delicious food as I would like for my field. This body of mine is heavy. Now the body is heavy and unsuitable for practice. What is coming always? Habit, habit. What is the habit? Postpone, postpone. Priority? For? Sleeping, resting, relaxing. Uh, and that monk thinks, this body of mine is heavy and unsuitable for work, stuffed with beings as it were. It's like a bag full of beings. My belly, stomach is like a bag full of beings. He thinks, no, I can't meditate now. It's very hard. 
Let me go to bed. Okay? He doesn't make an effort and so he thinks, why don't I lie down? So he lies down. He doesn't make an effort for the realization of the Dhamma that is not yet realized. See how this limited time is wasted? Then there is the case where a monk comes down with a slight illness. Okay? Kind of a mm, cough or calling fever. Slight illness. Or some ache of the legs. Or a slight headache. Okay? The thought occurs to him. I have come down with a slight illness. There is a need to lie down. <laughs> right? Don't you think this way? We are ready uh, before something happens. Uh, serious? You think? I think I am going to yeah, catch uh, terrible fever. So don't don't disturb me. I am going to <laughs> sleep. Where is the down practice? Where is the fear of samsara? Where is the fear of falling into bad worlds? Where is the understanding of the reality of this human life? There is a need to lie down. So he lies down. He doesn't make an effort for the realization of that precious Dhamma that is not yet realized. Okay, last one, the last ground of laziness. Then there is the case where a monk has recovered from his illness, not long after his recovery. So, think about this. This is a story of a monk, a person who has entered the dispensation of the Buddha, having given up all the possessions wealth, families, houses, education, everything. Why? Because he understood the danger of this samsara. He wanted to give priority to this Dhamma practice, but now it has become otherwise. Things have changed completely. That is the nature of this mind. If that is the case with a monk, let alone the lives of busy householders, that's why we should associate with Kalyamitas frequently. We should listen to the Dhamma about the danger of these bad worlds and how we have suffered in this long journey. We should listen to this Dhamma frequently. Because it is not an easy task to continue this practice. We should not forget that this is the most difficult practice in the world. Achieving true happiness. So now what has happened? Hmm? A monk has recovered from his yes. illness. Before his recovery, what, what did he do? He wanted to sleep. Now he has recovered. <laughs> Not long after his recovery, the thought occurs to him, I have recovered from my illness. It is not long after my recovery. This body of mine is weak still and unsuitable for work. Why don't I lie down? Still, I am not okay to practice. What is that? Postpone. It's like uh, the danger of not recollecting, not practicing the recollection of on death, Marana Sati. And Supreme Dhe explains, uh, this is about your lifespan. 
before you uh, take your breath in, you will die. You should think in that way. Before you inhale, you will die. Before you exhale, you will die. You have a very limited time period to live. If you think in this way, you will reach the goal. So if you think like that, and we are going to die in next moment, before I take my breath, right? That is the point. Still, still I haven't escaped from Bhagavad, still I haven't achieved Nibbana. So he does not make an effort for the attaining of the unattained Dhamma. This is the eighth ground for laziness. So, monks, these are the eight grounds for laziness. Now we learned these areas of laziness. Next, what should be done? We should find the ways to yes, get rid of these habits to overcome these things. Because we have to think deeply. See, everywhere, all over the world, uh, people are dying due to accidents, diseases, due to many disasters, everywhere. So, no one has escaped from death. But we should not forget. When we uh, learn some incidents of uh, deaths of people, we should not forget. He or she has lost that precious human life. That's why we should be very careful. Then Supreme Buddha, with great compassion, explains the way out. There are these eight grounds for the arousal of energy. What do we need then? Energy. Right? We have, we do have that energy, but it it hasn't, uh, it hasn't come out. It, ha it hasn't come out. Uh, it hasn't produced fruits. That's why it's called arousal of energy. We have to. We have to arouse it. We have to pull it out. We have to use it. How to use our energy? How to arouse our energy? Do you understand the energy? Energy like we need energy. Uh, we need um, energy to now for the dharma practice. What do we? How do we need energy for the dharma practice? We need energy to study the dharma, to listen to the dharma, to follow the precepts, to practice meditation. We need energy. If we are talking about this energy. Do you think that in order to have that energy always we need a uh, very healthy body and eating too much to make that energy? Okay, let's listen to the teachings of the Buddha. There are these eight grounds for the arousal of energy. Which eight? There is the case where a monk has some work to do. Okay? Some sort of repairing or cleaning the monastery, doing something or 
helping to fellow monks with doing something, cleaning things, washing things, like that. He has some work to do, maybe uh, tomorrow. The thought occurs to him. I will have to do this work tomorrow. Or maybe today. But when I am doing this work, it won't be easy to practice the Buddha's instruction. Because at that time you can't meditate, you can't read Dhamma books, you can't listen to the Dhamma. You have to pay attention to that work. Because meditation is the first priority of, the, of a monk's life. So you can't meditate at that time. Why don't I make an effort beforehand for the realization of that dumb which is not yet realized? Do you remember the first monk? What did he do? Before doing that work, he thought, Why don't I lie down? What did this monk think? I have to be busy tomorrow. So, I won't have enough time to practice the Dhamma. So, what should be done? I should make effort now. This is the way to change that habitual attitude. So he makes an effort for the achievement of the Dhamma that is not yet achieved. This is the first ground for the arousal of energy. Then there is the case where a monk has done some work. Do you remember the first monk? After after the work, what did he do? Yeah, I'm very tired and no. he went to sleep. The thought occurs to him that for the second monk, he thinks, I have done some work. While I was doing work, I couldn't practice the Dhamma. I couldn't practice the teachings of the Buddha. I am very sad because I have spent much time without practicing meditation. I am I should sit down. See? But still he that um, he he is tired. But he knows that he doesn't have time to relax the body. If we know that the death is reaching us next moment, we'll... Okay, if you, if you know that uh, an earthquake is going to heat tonight, are you going to go to bed tonight? <laughs> See, Supremal explains, every day you should think that too. Supremadev says, in the morning, every morning you should think, this morning, there are many reasons for my death. When the day passes, Supremadev explains, you should think, this afternoon, there are many reasons for my death. Many causes. I will die this evening. So before that happens, I should work hard. I should be diligent. I should not postpone the Dhamma practice. This is the true instruction of the Buddha. Okay. Next, so this monk, uh, he thinks, uh, I have done some work, while I was doing work, I couldn't practice the Dhamma well. Why don't I make an effort for the realization of that Dhamma? 
changing the habitual way of thinking. So he makes an effort for the attainment of the Dhamma that is not yet attained. Then there is the case where a monk has to go on a journey. He has to go on a journey. What did the first monk think? Before the journey? Yes, but this monk is serious in the practice. The thought occurs to him, I will have to go on this journey, but when I am going on the journey, it won't be easy to practice the Dhamma. Why don't I make an effort beforehand for the achievement of what is not, not yet achieved? Next one. These are very good lessons for us to uh, recall again and again, at least to weaken our laziness and sleepiness. Then, uh, there is the case where a monk has gone on a journey. The thought occurs to him, I have gone on a journey. While I was going on the journey, I could not practice the Buddha's instruction. Why don't I make an effort for the attainment of the Dhamma that is not yet attained? So what is this? After a journey. Normally what do we do after? Like, you can think in this um, summer, like, you might have uh, visited some places, like, after like going on trips and like that, what did you do first? You went to sleep. <laughs> went to sleep. Like, can we imagine uh, you after you uh, get off your vehicle, can you imagine going to sit for the meditation? But that is the path. That is the path. Since we have suffered enormously without making such an effort, it is, it is impossible to put to an end to this suffering. Because suffering is so great. So he thinks, why don't I make an effort because I couldn't practice the Dhamma while I was traveling? Now I should, I should work hard. No talk of sleeping. Now, now people raise a question, why can't we find Arnahans in, in this time period? Why are they so rare? Now, do you understand the reason? Why are Arahans rare in this time period? Because of this lack of energy, lack of effort. Then there is the case where a monk, having gone for arms in a village or town, doesn't get as much uh, refined food as he would like for his fill. He doesn't get enough food. He is still hungry. Do you remember the first monk? And do we do, do the same thing like when, when your parents encourage you? Do you think, no, I, today I am still hungry. I can't come for puja. Do you do like that? No, today I can't go for the Dhamma, Dhamma listening to Dhamma. I am very tired today. I am very, I think I am very weak today. Did you postpone like that? <laughs> this is a very good lesson for all of us, right? See, we shouldn't think like that. That is the habitual way which dragged us to hell. See, which dragged us to animal world. Which dragged us to ghost world for a long time.
that is the habitual thinking pattern. So we keep this that again and again. Should we use that? We shouldn't. Again, Supreme Mother explains. So here, the, the monk who doesn't get enough food, in this case, the thought occurs to him, oh, I haven't gotten enough food uh, as I would like for my fill. This body of mine is light today. The first monk thought, body is very weak. Now this one thinks, my body is very light and suitable for work. I don't have sleepiness today. Like drowsiness. When we eat too much, we, we experience like sleepiness, drowsiness, sloth and proper. Then this month he thinks, no, today I don't have those things. So I can use this energy for meditation. Okay? See this? Same incident, but two people think in two different ways. So, why don't I make an effort for the realization of this Dhamma? So he makes an effort for the Dhamma practice. Then there is the case where a monk, having gone for arms in a village or town, gets plenty of food. Okay. Now, do you remember the first monk, lazy monk? How did he think? What hmm? is very heavy and it's like a bag of beans. So I should go to bed. But this monk thinks the thought occurs to him: I have gotten uh, enough food, and now I am okay. This body of mine is. Uh, strong now today so it's suitable for work why don't i make an effort for the dharma practice so he makes an effort for the achievement of the goal okay next one supreme so expense then there is the case where a monk comes down with a slight illness or fever, maybe a slight <coughs> for a slight headache. What did he do? What did he remember? He remembered the bed, right? Now this monk, he thinks, I have come down with a slight illness. See how now how he thinks. Now there is the possibility that it could get worse. It could get worse in the future. This is interesting because when we have like weaknesses, we think, no, today I can't do. No, I can't do. Maybe tomorrow. But day by day, we are losing our abilities. Aren't we? We are growing old. So how can we think of a growth of our abilities? We are heading uh, towards losing our eyesight. Losing our hearing. Losing this comfort of the body. Aren't we heading that direction? We are. So this present is the most valuable time. So now don't people think, no, no, I will do it later. When I get some, uh, uh, some opportunity uh, and I want to finish these things first. And in the future I will be relaxed and not not very busy. So I, I will I will follow them easily. Don't people think that way? The, the wrong idea is that we are going to get more opportunities in the future. 
Is that correct? No, we are going to lose our opportunities, abilities. So this this present value of our life is beyond words. The value of the lives of kids is beyond words. Value of the life of youths is beyond words. And value of the uh, life of parents is beyond words. It is so precious. Because once we become grandmothers and grandfathers, Most of our time, we will spend on a bed. This is another reality. Lying down on a bed. Always sleeping. Like, while walking, we fall asleep. While practicing walking meditation, we fall asleep. Not to speak of lying down on a bed. That is, that is where we are heading. Even that, that will happen if we, uh, if we uh, haven't lie down on a bed in a hospital. So this is the present, precious time, this present. That's why this man thinks, now there is the possibility that it could get worse. No, again. When we have a slight illness, don't we think, let me heal this first. Right? I want to take medicine first and then when I become I get better, I would, I would listen to the Dhamma, I would observe precepts, I would practice meditation. But still, I am not okay. But this man thinks, no, I will get sick more and more frequently in the future. We should evaluate the power of our merits. If we are sick, if we are healthy today, it is because of our previous merits. We don't know what will happen tomorrow. Because we don't know about that accumulation of merit. So, now, is, is, is that clear? If we have a slight weakness, we should, we should think, no, I am okay, I am okay. S still, I, I am okay, because um, tomorrow this will get worse, but today I am okay. I can forget this ache of my back or leg. I can forget this headache. completely the opposite way of thinking. So he, uh, he thinks, why don't I make an effort beforehand for the attainment of the goal? So he makes an effort. This is the seventh ground for the arousal of energy. Then Supreme explains, then there is the case where a monk has recovered from his illness, not long after his recovery. Well, how did the first month think? Oh, hmm? yeah, oh, yes, I have just recovered from my illness. I just came from my from hospital, so I should I should rest. Still, I am not okay. But this monk thinks. I have recovered from my illness. It is not long after my recovery. No. There is the possibility that the illness could come back. Do you think that people are ready to think in this way? If somebody else reminds them, they will say, no, no, don't, don't say such unfortunate things. Isn't that the way of thinking? And we are afraid to say that. Say somebody has recovered from some illness, okay? Can we say to that person, you know, 
we will get sick again. <laughs> it will come back. Can we say that? No, we are very afraid to say that. Because that person will get upset and his like, mood completely change, will change. But Supreme Lord says, no, you should be open to the truth. What is the truth? That sickness will come back. We should not forget that we got sick. And how we suffered when we were sick. Okay, so today we learned uh, completely, we can say strange, strange ways of thinking. We bless all of you. May you continue with your effort energy and desire for the achieving of the goal, true happiness and may you realize the Four Noble Truths in this Gautama Buddha's dispensation. <laughs>